Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Ditch Auto. My name's Jared and we are starting week seven of our photography challenge. Now, the photography challenge started at the beginning of this year, as most of you know, and uh, it is a challenge to get us out and use our cameras more. Now, one of the things that I have learned, not only in producing this challenge and these videos, but just by interacting with all of you in the Facebook group is that it really is hard to get out and use your camera a lot. I mean, for me, I know it gets really challenging to just grab my camera and go take pictures. I almost have to kind of be forced into it sometimes. Maybe a client wants to hire me to go and take pictures for them, and that uh, creates, you know, a, a, a need. I have to go and take pictures because, um, you know, it's part of my job. And uh, to get out and just take pictures just for the heck of it is really hard. It is a challenge in and of itself. And now we're starting week seven. Um, you know, we started off the year really strong with a lot of people participating and it's kind of fluctuated. And I've gotten a lot of feedback from some of you that have been doing this challenge uh, periodically or even the whole time um, that we just get busy. And that's totally fine. I get that and understand. And even myself, I've gotten busy and it's been really hard for me to get out and try to take pictures as well. But I'm gonna keep doing this challenge because I really want you guys to use your cameras to get out there and try things. Even if you have to take a week off, even if you have to take two weeks off, it's not a big deal. These videos are always here and you can always come back and catch up on the challenges later. So this week's challenge is gonna be a little bit easier as far as the technical aspects go. I know the last few weeks I've kind of made uh, the challenges a little challenging. Um, they, are, they were more technical, even though not all of them were technical challenges. They did require spending a little bit of time manipulating settings and stuff like that. And that, you know, for some of us is a, a big challenge in and of itself. A lot of you recently either uh, took my Ditch Auto course and have are recent to uh, taking control of your camera with manual settings. And some of you aren't there yet, and that's totally fine. So the next couple of weeks challenges are gonna be a little bit simple as far as technical because I just want you to get out there and use your camera. Because even if you're not shooting completely in manual, and you're using one of the manual assist modes, or even if you're still shooting in auto, you need to use your camera more. And by using your camera more, you're gonna see what those, those uh, settings that your camera attempted to get are, you know, the shutter speed, the aperture, the ISO, the white balance, and all that stuff. And you're gonna look at it and say, okay, great, what do those numbers mean? And you're gonna be able to compare those and uh, make changes. And then that's what gets you into manual mode where you can manipulate those settings on your own. And I do have a course for that. It's linked in the description below. It's called Ditch Auto, Unlocking Manual Photography. And if you haven't taken it yet, I recommend that you sub, uh, subscribe to it. It's a free course um, and it will really help you understand how to get into manual mode and start utilizing more of your camera. So this week we are gonna be focusing on the sky. And I know that a lot of the photos that we have taken over the last uh, month and a half here have included the sky. You know, we did our, um, our negative space uh, week which is challenge was negative space, which a lot of us use the sky as our negative space uh, and incorporated something into the image um, to, to be in the positive space of the photo. Where I live out here in California, we've been experiencing a ton of rain and that's been intermittent with different aspects of uh, some sunshine. And with that brings just really interesting and different sky. Uh, you know, we're on the West Coast, I'm about, uh, an hour and 45 minutes from the ocean, uh, depending on where I decide to go. And so the sky typically, you know, everything rolls in off of the Pacific and, you know, we get decent looking skies here and there are other parts of the world in the United States and other countries where you get just really cool looking skies, whether it's a clear day, maybe it's warmer weather where you're at, or if you're here in the United States and we're smack dab uh, in, into winter. 
Um, the sky is just really interesting and it changes daily and the textures are different and everything is different about it. And so, you know, I don't necessarily want you to just point your camera up into the sky and take a picture. I want you to be, I want you to have your camera near you and be thinking about the sky and looking at the sky and looking for opportunities. And if incorporating something ground level into your sky photo, uh, it, it works for you, then definitely do it. Um, even take a, a negative space approach to it um, and maybe incorporate something in that image uh, that really makes the, the sky pop. Um, if you know there's some clouds or just something really interesting, take a photo of that. One of the interesting things about taking pictures of clouds or the sky is that especially if there's clouds in the sky, the, the sun hits those differently, whether they're backlit, the sun's behind them and sun is peeking through, or there's sun kind of hitting them from another side. Um, it's really easy to overexpose clouds and actually lose detail. So one thing that I really want you to keep in mind when you're taking the picture is looking at, looking at the, uh, through the, the camera and trying to see how is that going to come out when you take a picture, um, is it overexposed? And there's, there's settings in the back of our camera that allow us to see those overexposed areas. Um, it's been nicknamed the blinkies um, because when you turn them on, the exposure or overexposure notifications, uh, you take a picture and the areas of your photo that are overexposed will flash and we call them, they've been called blinkies. Uh, it's kind of just became the non-technical term for it. Um, so that is an assist inside of your camera and all cameras, uh, all, you know, Modern cameras have it, have that setting. So you may have to go look to your camera manual or do a Google search uh, for how to turn on um, overexposure notifications um, or peak uh, uh, peaking. And that will tell your camera what is overexposed and it will display that on the screen with the preview image so that you can see what's overexposed. And then you can make little adjustments to your exposure as you feel necessary. If you're shooting in manual mode, that might be taking your aperture from f6 up to f8 or up to f10, that may be decreasing your ISO down a little bit, or that may be even uh, increasing your shutter speed, um, you know, up a little bit from maybe 1 1 60th to 1 2 50th of a second, just so that you can decrease your exposure a little bit. One tip that I have always held fast to is that it is so much easier with just the quality of our cameras these days to underexpose your image a little bit when you take it and then bring those brightness values up a little bit in Lightroom or Photoshop. What's much harder is to take a photo that's overexposed and bring back some of that detail. Of course, Lightroom and Photoshop and the camera raw uh, settings have gotten really good with um, kind of the highlight, being able to recover some highlight areas, but it's still not perfect. It can't bring back something that is solid white that has no detail. So I recommend when shooting stuff that has just maybe some weird brightness values um, because of the sun or because of just the way the lighting is hitting it to maybe uh, decrease your exposure just a little bit when you're looking at that meter inside of your camera. And this is something that I go over in the Ditch Auto course. When you're looking at that light meter inside your camera, and a lot of us want to get it smack dab on zero and you take that picture, if something is overexposed a little bit, maybe try adjusting your uh, exposure a little bit so that it's maybe just negative uh, one or negative 0.7 or something like that. Take the picture again and see if you're able to get it. Yes, the sky may look a little bit darker than you wanted, but you can always bring back a little bit of that exposure in Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Photoshop. It's much easier to do that than it is to bring back overexposed areas. So that's gonna be our challenge for this week is the sky. Do with that as you will, get as creative or um, you know, take as many pictures as you need. Don't, don't feel that you have to submit your first one. Um, and please come to the Facebook group, link is in the description below, um, and post your photo. There is an album that I have created in the Facebook group for week seven photos. So please be uploading your photos to that album uh, instead of in the comments of something else. Um, it's it, It's, it's easy to go and see all the photos, but if I wanted to go and look at all of a week's challenge photos, sometimes they're getting kind of posted in weird places inside of the group. So please go into the actual group, uh, go into the photos tab, 
and look for the week seven album, or I've also provided a link right below this video that will take you straight to the album, and then you can add your photo to the album, not to a comments, but to the album. So I'm super excited to see what the sky looks like in all of the different areas that all of you uh, come from, and uh, I'm super excited to see how that looks to you, what your eye sees, and I just love what you're telling, and it, when you post the photos, you're sharing your thoughts and what was going through your mind and your camera settings and just all the stuff. It's just been super cool to see what you guys have been coming up with, and I thank you so much for taking part in this challenge. I have some super exciting news this week as far as some uh, incentives and stuff that some companies have uh, decided to come alongside us and give us some fun stuff. So I'm excited to announce that. So make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel here for Ditch Auto uh, because being subscribed gets you notified right away when new videos come up. And it also uh, allows you to see any of these other videos that we put up, um, which are you know, good for educational purposes too. So thanks so much. I hope to see you in the Facebook group and keep ditching auto and uh, having fun with this challenge. We'll see you in the group. Thanks.